The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was standing one day at the lake of Gennesaret with a crowd pressing around him, listening to the word of God, when he caught sight of two boats close to the bank. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, it was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and pay out your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing, but if you say so, I will pay out the nets. And when they had done this, they netted such a huge number of fish that the nets began to tear. So they signaled to, to other companions in the other boats to come and help them. When these came, they filled the two boats to sinking point. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were completely overcome by the catch they had made. So also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. But Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on it is men you will catch. Then bringing their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Dear beloved in Christ Jesus, we are all here in this, in this land working or doing something here and we are here called by some concern or some uh, factory or some firm or some school or some hospital and uh, probably you send your CV and they saw you're fit for it and they called you if they had not called you you would not be here yeah uh, and uh, when they called you and they, uh, they also promised you to take care of certain of your needs. They also promised you to fulfill some of your, you know, give you certain amount of uh, remuneration. And they also give you so many privileges to you. Okay. And uh, so therefore every, the, the, the call that they have, they have extended to you has got so many things, uh, blessings so many uh, advantages that you receive. And uh, you know, as I told in the introduction, we all think that this all happened in a ch by chance or by your choice. To some extent, they are true. But at the same time, there has been a hand, a mysterious hand of God that has been working behind all these things. And we see call that as God has called you. That is a vocation. It's a vocation. This is a call from God. You know, when, when Pope Francis was elected as a, uh, the Bishop of Rome, and he was asked by some of the secular magazines, some, some secular papers, uh, why are we here? And then he said, there was a vacancy here in, this, uh, uh, in the Diocese of Rome. They were looking for a bishop. And God saw me graciously, looked at me, a man who was in there in, in uh, Argentina. He looked at me graciously and he called me and therefore I'm here. If God had not looked at me graciously, I would not be here. And therefore, because God looked at me graciously and I'm here. So my dear, remember that. God has been gracious to you and to me and therefore, and he looked at me and therefore I'm here. You are here. 
Now sometimes we think that you know vocation or a call of God is only for the priests and nuns and religious, you know. Probably they are called to be involved in some, you know, the public affairs, you know, take care of public uh, needs and so on. But that doesn't mean they are the only call, call from God. They are only, only they have the call from God. Everyone is called, okay? And uh, in today's gospel, you know, the today's reading, we are given uh, instance of three callings, three vocations. One of Isaiah, another one of Paul, another one of Peter and his companions. Yeah. And uh, if you re read them, they, the, the call took place in their lives in a dramatic way. You know, in a dramatic way. And, uh, and uh, you know, it happened also without the expectation. Without the expectation. But uh, when they were called, they had, uh, there came about a kind of dramatic change in their lives. And uh, they have to change their direction. Okay? They also have to change their uh, you know, way of life. Okay, and uh, so therefore, uh, it's uh, that particular call was dramatic. But uh, in our case, it may not be very dramatic. You know, God has not been calling in a dramatic way as He called Isaiah or called uh, Peter or Paul. But He has called us in a in a gentle way, in a mysterious way. Some of you may say that you know, something something happened in my life, and that's the reason I'm here. Probably you had something dramatic. Not everybody has the dramatic happen in their lives. Hmm? And uh, you know, this uh, call of God is not something only to do with the, you know, the worship place, the sanctuary has happened in Isaiah. But it, uh, it, it, the call comes also in the, in the middle of the road. And also call of, call of God comes also in, the, in your workplace. As happened in the case of Peter and his companions, they were working, and God calls. And uh, our Paul was going on the, on the, towards Damascus on the road, God calls him. So therefore, where, does, where will God call you? Anywhere you can call. Call can come, and not in the church, not in the, in, the, in the context of worship or the sanctuary. And, uh, you know, call of God is not only to choose a particular way of life, priesthood or religious life, a marital life, or to a particular state of life, okay, a particular job or particular, uh, you know, a particular uh, doing or something. It's not only that. God not only just calls once and leaves you and goes, but rather, if you, let's say you are called to marital life. Surely that's a, really a call from God. But it doesn't stop there. After having called you, and God keeps calling you at every moment, at every turn of your life, at every move of your life. Therefore, is not a God who called you, but a God who keeps calling you every day, in every situation, you know? Uh, that's what happened, you know? God, Jesus, gets into the boat of uh, uh, Peter, and then, of course, make, uh, makes use of that as his uh, stage to preach to the people. And then, you know, he tells them, he tells them to, now, now it's time for you to go deep, venturing, venturing. Though you have been walking, you have been walking whole night, but that is not the end of it. Now go. In other words, God's call, you know, always, you know, uh, 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 impels us to go forward. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, it never uh, tells us to stay, uh, what call, never uh, to back off or to turn aside or to withdraw, but to plunge, to venture, take up. I'm there with you. Okay. Uh, so, Isaiah, when, when God gave that, you know, the vision, he makes, he makes him, uh, calls him to be, an, uh, to, uh, to be a prophet. And when, uh, when he meets, when God calls uh, Paul, may, uh, gives him the opportunity to, to be a preacher of the gospel. When Peter and his companions, when God calls, they were made into fishes of men. You know, venturing, venturing. And uh, so therefore, you know, God calls him and, and then he says, put out into the deep. Put out into the deep. And then, you know, when the Lord calls, 
he expects us to respond positively. Very often we don't respond positively. And therefore, you know, uh, Peter, when God says, put out, uh, Jesus tells, put out in the deep, and he gives a reason, you know, we have been working a whole night, nothing happened. But then after he says, at your word, I will let down my net. Because you said that, I will. And that's exactly. Every time, you know, there are most moments when we face a, a, a moment of confusion. But that the Lord seemed to be telling us, you know, through people and through events and in the depths of our heart, you no, know, this is better for you to do. You know, then you have to make a kind of blind leap, trusting in God. You know, because you say this, Lord, I will take it up. Trust in God. Okay? And when he does that, when he says that, you know, go forward and put out the net in the deep and so on, he's not abandoning, he's not going to abandon us. He is there with you in your life boat. He's there in the boat of Peter. And therefore he says, put out. So when we respond to God's call, when, we, when you believe that your life is, a, is, a, is, a, is a what it is because of God's call, you should, you'll know that God is there. You are not alone. That's the beauty of our, looking at our life here, living here in this situation, any situation that we're living in. Maybe you are living, you have a tough time in your family, but you, that is your boat. You are not alone. You are there because God has called you. And God is there. Jesus is there in your boat. And therefore, when Jesus is there in your boat, don't think that everything will be, you know, smooth. Everything is smooth. Very often, we have rough weather and also unrewarding toil. But we know God is there. And you know the extensive where how Jesus was there when, when, uh, when uh, disciples were traveling in, by a boat and uh, Jesus how he, uh, saves them. And for that, my dear brother, what is needed on our part is the attitude of humility. In other words, I know my limitations. I am not as strong as I think. I am not all capable. I am not omnipotent. I am not omniscient. Not that I know everything. Not only that, I am a sinner. I have a lot of limitations. Uh, no, that's what you find. Isaiah says, I am a man of unclean lips. And then Paul says that, you know, I'm an unworthy servant because I persecuted Jesus in the Christians. And Paul himself says, no, no, leave me, Lord, I'm a sinner. In other words, the humility, you know? You know, the uh, opposite of humility is pride and self-conceitedness. This pride, we think, it's, it's, it shows our courage. No, only the courageous people are not proud. Only cowards are proud. They want to show them off because they want to hide their cowardice. Their cowardice. In a Goliath, he's a strong man, a strong uh, uh, man. But how is that he was able to just fall and die just with one pe pebble thrown by the little boy, David? It's not because he was, he was bodily was, uh, he was weak, but he was weak because he had so much of pride in him. So much of pride in him. I am the strongest man. And he falls. So it's a pride that fell him down. In the same way in the case of Peter. Peter said, even if all deny you, Lord, I will not deny you. The Lord said, tonight you will deny me three times. You know, why? Because he was, he was trusting in his own power. The pride that made him weak. And that he went to the extent of denying Jesus. I don't know that man. So my dear brothers and sisters, let's become aware that we are here, uh, we are here in any, any walk of life or any job or any state of life, not just by chance, not only by your, uh, by your uh, choice. If you think only that, I think then your life would be a, simply a survival. I'm here just to survive, nothing else. But if you say that it, uh, I'm here because God has called, called, it becomes a great opportunity. 
you understand then you have the you have you have you experience a kind of energy in you to live your life however bad the weather is you know even in the rough weather even if your uh, toil is not rewarding still you say god has called me and therefore i will live here i live in this family i live with this my life partner so our life is a beautiful gift from god because god has called us may god give us peace